This TV right behind me is a Vizio P-Series Quantum X. It's a 65 inch and it's one of the brightest TVs that I've ever seen. As this thing, the 65 inch version can get up to 3000 nits, which is insane. It's an awesome TV for enthusiasts and makes an excellent gaming display as well, as it can go up to 120 hertz. Perfect for next generation consoles. Now I spend my time with this TV, fiddling with it, Looking for some interesting features to see what else can this thing really offer, like the ability I could like remotely control it from just using my phone, and so much more. And so in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the nifty features, some cool tips and tricks of what this TV can offer. This is an awesome video for not just future buyers, but also current owners. So if you too also own a Vizio with a very similar operating system like this, continue watching this as I'm gonna go ahead and show you pretty much all the cool things that this TV can do. Now, quick thanks to Vizio for not just sponsoring today's video, but also providing us this television, as well as giving us this new Vizio M-Series all-in-one soundbar. And there is a giveaway going on that Vizio is hosting. If you'd like to know how you could enter to possibly win one of these, continue watching this video to find out more about that giveaway. With that said, let's go ahead and start the video. So yes, first thing first, you have access to a bunch of popular applications, some of which are actually surprising because it does have Apple TV, which means you could technically link this to your Apple's account by simply launching the Apple TV app. You can easily just navigate to the gear icon, go on the account tab, and right here, sign in, and just sign in using your mobile device and just scan the QR code, log in with your Apple information, and you're set. The process literally only takes a matter of seconds. And once you're signed in, you'll see that all your other movies that you have previously linked with your Apple ID are all right here. No need to sign in to individual applications. Then if you wish to control your television by using the AirPlay, just quickly go to the AirPlay icon all the way on the very top. You're going to go ahead and see this page and click on HomeKit settings and go all the way down to set up HomeKit. By walking through the screen tutorial by scanning the QR code, you will unlock some very useful tools. One of which is you have the ability to select the automatic leave whenever your phone detects you left the building your television will automatically turn off. This is really nifty, and not only that, you also unlock additional tools as well, whereas you could actually turn on and off the television by using your cell phone, just by tapping on these icons. And if you haven't yet set up your remote control on your control center, it's really easy to do so. Simply just go into your settings, go into control center, and go all the way down until you see Apple TV remote, add this, you can rearrange it by holding down this little line icon and bringing it all the way up like so, however you like it. Now when you open up control center, you can find the remote icon right here and you can select the TV on top and from here you can basically control your entire television. This includes your volume controls by having this controller icon up. If you use your phone's volume rockers, you can actually fully adjust the audio like so. But if you want the full number keypad, or you're on an Android device, you can also look up the Vizio SmartCast application. By simply downloading this app and installing, you can search by a nearby Vizio product, like our television that's a fine example, select it, enter the PIN number that's displayed on your screen, the TV will automatically detect the app, enter that code, and once you're connected, you'll see that all the applications that's installed on your television can be easily accessed by tapping on your phone, like so. And then you may also find a more useful remote on this app compared to what the Apple TV remote has to offer. And then by having HomeKit set up to your Apple devices, you can request Siri to turn on or adjust the audio by simply asking Siri to turn off the TV or set the volume at a certain level by either using a HomePod or your smartphone virtual voice assistant. And then in addition to that, if you bring down the control center and you long press on the television that you want to select, you could also switch between different inputs and you could also find another power button right here as well. Now if you'd like to mirror your display on your cell phone to the TV, you can easily do so by bringing down the control center and tap screen mirroring and select the name of that television you're trying to connect to as AirPlay is built into the television as we previously discussed and will basically mirror everything like so. If you'd like to cancel, just repeat the process. Now if you're on Android, it does have a built-in Chromecast, which all you gotta do is bring down your control center on your smartphone and scroll to where you see the Chromecast icon right here. Just tap on the name of your television and start, and there you go. Now it's mirroring everything that you see on your display 
on to the TV behind you. Now, since our device does have a built-in Chromecast, if you're watching a video or streaming some type of video content on your cell phone, you could actually cast it to the TV by tapping the little square icon with the Wi-Fi icon, and this will allow you to stream from your phone to the television in a matter of seconds. Now, if you like to have a virtual voice assistant like Google or Alexa to also have control of your TV, just go into the Extra tab and select either Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. But here you can find other useful tools as well. We're just going to go ahead and set up Amazon Alexa at the same process. Just follow the on-screen instructions and this will allow Alexa to have control of your television. So you could literally request it to turn on or off the TV, launch certain applications, or play certain series like on Netflix and such. And then other stuff you can find in the extra tab is the backdrop. Here you can actually change the duration of the timer if you wanted to go on within a minute or 10 minutes sometime between there you could adjust it which basically is like a screensaver a little timer will go up on the corner of the screen and we'll begin playing the chromecast backdrops now if you want to change the backdrop image you can totally do so in case you don't know by simply downloading the google home app logging in with your account information if you go down you can select the name of your television that's nearby local under local devices select that let it connect and you could see the current background that's playing. You can also tap on the very bottom right here where it says edit ambient mode and here you have more options where you can select certain photos that you have on your Google Photos, art gallery, and etc. You can also hide certain things like the weather, time, and other useful settings you could adjust like the duration, speed, and such. That's how you could change that. Now this TV comes loaded with a lot of pre-installed apps, but if you like to edit it, just go all the way to the opposite side of the screen until you see this customized app layout. Here is where you can actually readjust your application. So you can adjust your most used apps and move them to the very front so it's easier to reach. And when you're done, just tap done and that's basically it. Now if you have an Apple computer, you can actually mirror the display on your computer to the television. And the process is really easy. By going into your control center right here, select screen mirroring. Here you can actually cast everything on the display to the television. And you can also expand it as well. If your computer is equipped with a touch bar like this, you can actually select it right here. Or you can always go up here, select here, and now you could use it as an extension to your display or reverse it to mirror it. And don't worry, if you have a Windows computer and you don't have an Apple, by using the Google Chrome app, if you go on the health tab and you type in cast, you can actually cast the web browser to the television by selecting the name and just let it cast and just like so. It just mirrors everything on the web browser to the television. Now the remote control to the television also has a couple of interesting helpful tools as well. The information button. When press, will tell you the resolution of the video that you're watching as well as you can see the time and such. And will also show you if the video is buffering or not, as well as tell you if this is Dolby Atmos and a couple other information as well. Now other additional goodies, whenever you have like an Xbox or a PlayStation or something plugged in via an HDMI, the HDMI cable may automatically update like this one says Xbox, but there's times where it doesn't do this. If you want to manually edit a name of a certain input, you could easily do so. By clicking on the menu button on a remote, and if you go all the way down to system, and if you go down to hide inputs, you may not only be able to hide certain inputs if you don't want something to pop up, but you can also edit the TV name right here. But down here, you can also find input name, and this is where you could come in and edit all these. Now, as previously mentioned, Vizio did indeed provide us with a pretty cool soundbar, as this is the new Vizio M series all in one soundbar. By that means, everything is literally all built into it. It has a total of six speakers and two subwoofers, and the sounding experience isn't that bad, especially when you combo it inside this regular sized room. The sounding experience is very similar to what you expect to hear out of a cinema. And yes, now one of my most favorite features is that it does have HDMI arc. What this means by simply plugging in one single HDMI cable from the soundbar to the television, that's all you need. It's able to transfer the sound from the television to the soundbar. And not only that, it also supports 4K HDR as it does have an HDMI pass through, which means even if you're using up one HDMI port on your television, you can still plug in the additional HDMI over here that will actually still deliver that 4K resolution to the TV so you don't lose an HDMI port, which is pretty cool. But of course, you have all the other most popular sound sources like Bluetooth, 
optical, USB, or even an aux cable if you want to plug in and deliver sound that way. You have those choices as well. So there we have it. If you want to have a chance to possibly win a Vizio like this, all you gotta do is simply follow Vizio on Instagram. Then click on the link in the video description down below to enter the sweepstakes. Fill that quick form up and that's basically it. Competition will end at the end of this month. So best of luck. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. Thanks once again Vizio for providing us the television and the silent bar for us to take a look at and look at its operating system and see what it really has to offer. If you'd like to continue watching more, feel free to go ahead and watch this video over here. So this is the video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. And then that video over there, that's just a latest upload video as well. Happy holidays, take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.